Hello, I'm Jorge Bailina, I'm the technical lead at Polygon Hermes. And today I'm going to present mainly the public testnet that we published it, uh, last, last Monday. First of all, I'm going to explain a little bit how the CKVM works, and then we are going to proceed to a demo. How a roll-up, how a CKVM works from the user perspective? Well, a user should not see any much any any difference like working with any other network what we will do is first we will send uh, transactions to a sequencer a sequencer will already give a, a, a state that means that the state will be final as far as you trust a sequencer sequencer in the first version is going to be a centralized sequencer we will decentralize later on but uh, if you trust a sequencer, this transaction is final, and you have the warranty by the sequencer that this transaction is going to be mined. It's going to be processed. The sequencer will collect transactions, and at some point, will send these transactions to the blockchain. Okay? And, and then, at this point, the state is final and safe. Here, we don't have any proof yet. It's just the transactions are set, and we have the warranty that those transactions are going to be processed. Uh, in that order, and because they are on chain, you can, they cannot, they are not going to be changed. So they, you know that they are final, and you don't need to trust the sequencer anymore. You know that these transactions are final. And in background, in parallel, it's going to be the prover, actually, that's going to take all these transactions and it's going to compute, it's going to prove that this implicit state, so this state that everybody can compute, but it's not, it's not on chain because in on chain is are only the transactions. The data availability, if you want, the transactions are going to be processed, but it's going to be converted to a real, to a real state. And this is proved by the prover. This is the big difference with the optimistic rollups. In optimistic rollups, you need to wait for somebody to, to challenge this state. In the in in or, in, in a zk rollup, this state it's become um, the prover just set this state, and you know for sure that this that that, that this is valid. Is at this point where the user can withdraw withdraw the funds. So here, the most important piece or the differential piece of a zk rollup is the prover. The prover is a zero knowledge proof. If you want a validity proof that uh, validates the transactions, which transactions? Ethereum transactions. It's taking a state, it's taking a set of Ethereum transactions, and it's computing a new state and validating that this state is valid. So how how the prover is built. So what's, what's inside the prover? Well, the prover is a set of technologies, but um, the way we built this, we have a, a circuit, uh, which is a traditional circuit written in, in, in PIL, specific language we built for the ZKBM. That's mainly a processor. It's a generic processor. It's generic. It's uh, with some spe uh, specifies, that, but it's a, it's, a, it's a processor that's built with this zero-knowledge uh, technology. And on top of this processor, we are running a program, we call it a ROM, okay, that actually is an Ethereum, it emulates Ethereum. It actually, this program, just is the, is, this program is the one that is actually taking the transactions, uh, analyzing the transactions, checking that the signature is valid, discounting the balances, checking the fees, deploying the smart contracts, executing the smart contracts, and doing exactly the same that does Geth or that does any Ethereum node. Just Processing these, uh, processing these transactions. All this goes to a prover, and, it's, and this prover is the one that's uh, verified on chain. If you zoom in in the processor, well, we have a, mainly a processor, is this uh, ZK processor. It's a, all this uh, processor is very tailor made for uh, the ZKBM. So it's not like a very generic processor, it's this part that's generic, but there are specific pieces that are uh, made uh, explicitly to uh, be optimal for running the uh, EBM program, the ZKBM program. Okay? This processor has a RAM, has a ROM, which contains this program that's executed, contains a storage, because the EBM, you should be able to store values and, and, and get the values. It has also a uh, kind of a subprocessor that uh, handles all the binaries operations. Here includes uh, addition, subtraction, 
uh, and XOR, XORs, and so on, has a module that's for arithmetic. This is, you know, in the in the in the IBM, it works in 256 bits. So this arithmetic uh, circuit actually does all these operations in the 256 bits. Okay, and then has uh, the hashing uh, for ketchups and uh, other hashes that are also inside the inside the process in, inside this processor. On top of this processor, there is this ROM. Okay, this ROM is written in assembly. It's a specific assembly for this uh, processor, and here is what contains that this here contains all the logic. Actually, it contains all the all the theorem logic that when we, where we are processing here. Here, I want to show you just a snippet of code of how this looks like. This is just, for example, the, the opcodes dup, dup1 and dup2, but here we have all the opcodes. We have implemented all the Ethereum opcodes uh, at this point. And then, once we run this, then we need like the cryptographic prover. The cryptographic prover, uh, what we do is mainly we are using Starks with a, a, a very optimal way to compute uh, proving systems. We are using Goldilocks. It's a technology for, from people from, for our colleagues in uh, Polygon Zero that makes to build these proofs really fast. And it's a kind of a recursion, so it's a prover can aggregate many proofs. And at the end, this is a Stark, and at the end, what's doing is we are converting, we are verifying this Stark with a Snark. So at the end, we just, in Ethereum, we are just verifying a normal Gross 16 or Plonk uh, proof. It's just a, circu it's a circum circuit in the last, in the bottom of that piece. So this is the stack, the cryptographic stack for verifying that. Okay, so let's cross fingers and let's try to see the demo. Let's see if it works. If it not, doesn't work, you can try it, okay? You can go to public.zkvm.net and, and test it. You will see that it's very simple. The demo that I'm gonna do is first of all, I'm gonna bridge it. Let me just uh, switch, okay? So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna bridge. Uh, so I'm in GoEarly, uh, I'm in GoEarly network. I have an account here that uh, has three GoEarly already and it's just a, a strike new account that I just created before this. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer, I'm gonna bridge three ethers, uh, three, uh, well, 0 0.25 ethers. This is the maximum that we allow here in these test nets just to protect some denial of service attacks here. Uh, and we are just to transfer to the, uh, to the layer to the layer two. So I'm in GoEarly right now, so I'm just, uh, like, let's see if Ethereum works. Okay, here we are. Uh, let's bridge it. Okay, so let's sign. Let me just uh, let me just let me just uh, modify the gas fee so that it takes uh, it goes faster. It's too early, so you never know. Save. Okay, and then just send this transaction. Okay. Okay. Now the the no the so we just deposit the transaction. This transaction is uh, mined in mining in early. We need to wait also a little bit so that this transaction is kind of a final, so that this transaction is included. Okay. Right now it's this is already so it's this is already done. What we have done is we just put this transaction in a Merkle tree, and then the root of this Merkle tree of all deposits is passed uh, is passed as the as the state of the of the rollup. The sequencer, actually, there has not been any, trans, any special transaction on chain because the sequencer already takes in account that. Okay? So now let's uh, finalize this. Okay? And this finalize, what it's doing is collecting, it's doing an L2 transaction to collect these uh, this funds, this Ethereum in the, in the layer 2. So here, when I push here, the first thing that uh, asks me, ask me is just to switch the network. So I'm just switch the network. And now I'm just signing the transaction in, in I'm just, just signing the transaction in layer two. Okay, so I just signed the transaction. And let's see if it works. There we go. Should, yeah, here it is. Okay, so now if I check the account, I'm in the layer two. Now I have the 0 0.25 ether in the layer, in the layer two. Okay, so now let's, now let's go to, do something with this account, okay? Let's create a smart contract and deploy it in this layer two. So let's go to Remix. Just gonna use uh, an example, very simple smart contract. Uh, this looks like Remix is gone. So let's, let me just load 
case. This is just a very example smart contract. So let me compile. Let me compile this smart contract. There it is. And now I'm going to deploy it to the layer two. So I'm going to connect this to um, MetaMask. Okay, I'm just uh, using this account. And then I'm just, uh, well, this is, I don't know if I'm connected to the last one. Well, just connect here. Yeah, this is the one that I just did. I have the 25 ether here. So and let's deploy this. Okay, so just deploy this smart contract. And it asks me to sign. I just confirm this transaction. See if it goes. This internet is not like the fastest thing here. But here is, okay. So now here we have the smart contract. If we do a get A, it's, we get a zero. But if we, for example, we set a 22, so this we generate a transaction that to set this state variable to 22. We sign it, confirm. Save. There it is. And I just get the value. And I see here the 22 right here. Okay, so I just deployed that in uh, layer two like any other network here. Okay, so um, what's going on in here? So let's 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 see let's see the let's go to the let's go to the uh, to the uh, this is the rollup smart contract in the layer one. Okay, and here we see two kind of transactions. One are the sequence uh, batches like here, where here you can see in the data that this is, here are all the, all the transactions that we are setting, okay? But in parallel, but in parallel to this, we have the, the batch, the batches is the prover that's generating batches, that's actually validating these transactions. And here is where all the magic happens, okay? Here in the blockchain, you cannot see much, but here is the proof. Actually, this is the gross 16 proof in this case that validates all the transactions that uh, we have been processing. processing. Okay, so until here is, well, I can, maybe I can give you a bonus, a bonus track here. So we can go, for example, to Uniswap. Okay, this Uniswap is, is already uh, um, deployed as is without compiling and re recompiling anything. It's just a normal Uniswap is deployed in layer two. And here we can do, for example, a transfer. Let me just, just, just change the account to, the first one, so that I have some some tokens to 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 exchange. Okay, and here I want to convert from foo to bar, just a normal swap. Okay, and just, just not it's fetching the price. I'm just doing the swap, confirm swap. Now I should sign the transaction. So here we have uh, deployed. So we here we have already deployed the full Uniswap version three in the layer two, and all this is verified in the prover. Just confirm that. Okay. Now this is confirmed. Now well, here the the Uniswap interface has some. Uh, it's iterating. It takes maybe some ten seconds or so to to realize that the transaction has been moved. But that's mainly the thing. Okay. So let me go. Well, just let me see if it finished this. Just uh, here it is. Okay. So I already do the swap, so I can just check in the swap, just like normal, like any other uh, Ethereum transaction. So let me switch back to the presentation. So nothing fancy, right? That's the cool thing, and that's the strange things, even for me explaining. For me, I, here I'm just feeling that I did a demo of Ethereum. But this is the interesting thing. It's that the, all this is running, all this is validated in the prover. All these transactions that are really complex, or all the Uniswap transactions and everything, this is validated uh, inside the prover. And this is what this ZKVM and the main importance of this design. You don't have to recompile anything. You just take the code, exactly the same code. You don't have to re-audit anything. You don't have to learn anything. You can use exactly the same tooling. You can use the same, the same language, the same gas model. It's no difference. For developers, they should not notice any difference in uh, deploying, in working with Ethereum or in, uh, or in ZKVM. The only difference should be the gas price and the quantity of transactions that you should be able to deploy. This is a testnet. 
please test it. We have been running for this week already. We have more than 1,000 accounts. We have, uh, most of them are just deploying uh, transactions. Some of the projects are already tested, uh, already tested without uh, uh, any big issue. We have re re uh, some reports of some bugs that we have been fixed also, and we will continue work. It's, this testnet is a little bit like a baby. It was born uh, last Monday, but uh, it's going to get stronger. And uh, this is the, the previous stage just to the, to the, to the mainnet. Okay. Here is, uh, okay, and what's the limit of the scaling this? We don't know yet. What's clear is not gonna, it's not gonna be in the prover. It's gonna be maybe in the data availability, it's gonna be in the, maybe in the sequencer, in the other pieces. But because, why? Because the prover can be parallelized. And here the important part, actually, for example, we are running uh, seven provers at this point, because this week, you know, there is many transactions, some of the provers have been stopped, so we are just, just trying to catch up with, the, with some of these transactions. But this is the cool thing, you, we can run as many provers as we want. So if there is a lot of demand, we're just running more provers. And the only thing you need to take in account is what's the cost per transaction, because running these servers are not free. So what's this, what's this cost? Well, the cost right now is less than one cent per transaction. And there is, this is in AWS cost, which is probably the, the most expensive uh, cloud service in the, in the, in the, in, in, in the world. And uh, there is also a lot of optimizations that are coming. Here in GPU, we, can, we believe that we can improve one order of magnitude, and there is other improvements that we are working on that. But prover is not the, is not the, the bottleneck anymore. What's missing? Well, not much. So we are fully compatible. We are running all the all the all the opcodes. Everything works as, as as Ethereum is. There are some things that we are already implementing. They are not implemented yet, and I'm just listing here. But everything is there. What is missing is the pre pre IP is the original Ethereum transactions. This is mainly to deploy mainly not safe, but it's uh, just for for these trans these smart contracts that have the same address. In many in, 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 in many chains, they use they are using these primitive transactions that they don't include the chain ID. We are implementing those, and then the, we are not supporting yet the SHA-256, the Blake, and the Paydings pre-compiled smart contracts. But this is a work in progress. All of them are uh, doable, and we will we will work in the coming uh, on those on in the coming in the coming months. There is the audit. I don't want to enter in, in detail in the audit, but this is probable the the most challenging part that we're facing right now. There is a full plan for running these audits. If anybody interested in that, please contact me. What else are we working on? We are working also in the aggregating of the proof. Right now, the aggregator, so right now we are running one, one proof per batch, okay? but we have to uh, run one. So we need to aggregate all these proofs in a single transaction in, and, and with a, in a single proof, actually. We are working in this proof. This is not that much because we have all the recursion already done and it's just putting them together, but it's a piece that we need to put there. And uh, we're also working with the EIP 4844 for dunk sharding. This is uh, clearly the future for the scalability and uh, we are already uh, working uh, on that. We are very excited on that. I, I have to recognize that when I read this uh, EIP, I was very skeptical at the beginning, but uh, it's really the way to go. We, we, we can implement Insight and it really go, will go even faster and it's even better than what I would, what I would do. It's just uh, that you, the only thing is that you need to go a little bit deep uh, to understand this EIP. But it's really uh, interesting. I'm very excited for the scaling. Testing. We are running the, the, the Ethereum test uh, suites. Right now, we are at 97% of uh, passing all these tests. There are edge cases that we are still uh, working on that, but uh, I'm sure that uh, very soon uh, we will be covering the, we will be in 100% of the, of, the of the Ethereum test. On that. Roadmap, of course, we just launched the public testnet. Uh, we need to audit, and we will launch when it's ready. Here is uh, we want we want to be enough safe. We, we want enough sure that so 100% uh, safe is going to be impossible. But we want we want to be responsible, and we want to audit this very well. And when we feel comfortable, then we will we will we will launch. 
A reminder, everything is open source. You can take a look, you can see, you, you, can, you can review. Everything is uh, uh, in the GitHub repositories. And yeah, GKVM is no longer a myth. Here you have the GKVM. Thank you so much. Uh, we have a couple of minutes for uh, questions. So if you have a question, please raise your hand. Hello, thank you for the presentation. Uh, the EVM is not a frozen object. It's living and it's evolving with new EIPs. And we are going to see possibly big change like the EOF or other things like that. And they will be way easier to implement for core devs and for you. So are you worried that some possible EVM change will be hard to translate into circuit in the future? Uh, we need to see which are those changes. And once I see the changes, I will tell you. But uh, there is one thing that, because this is, this is some of the, the questions that I receive. No? It is, uh, sometimes it's more about the upgradability of uh, this, what happens if the ZKVM upgrade, and then what, what happens with the roll-up? It will upgrade and if you want a decentralized system. And, but here is, uh, we need to understand as a community that uh, the IBM at, at this point is evolving because it's work in progress, but at some point this will, this, this will need to be frozen. Uh, I don't know when and how, but, and I'm not talking about the ZKBM, I'm talking about the IBM. So the IBM, if you want, uh, I, be, I, 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 I believe, I hope, and uh, if talking with people with the EF, they, they already think, very much on that time is that at some point, maybe in two years, three years, five years, once the Ethereum is finished, then the EVM will be frozen. And then it will be also the time to, fr to freeze the, the rollups. Thank you for the presentation. Great talk. I w would like, I mean, could you detail a little bit what are the edge cases that you are uh, meeting um, regarding the failing tests? Uh, here we have uh, Carlos in the room. That's the responsible for testing. You can ask them, but they are very, very, they are very, very um, complex one. It's uh, a call of a static call, and then do a self-destruct and and do whatever. You know, these are very, very, very edge cases. Uh, very, very edge cases tested, but we, you have to you have to look at it because you never know, and, and it's important. That's why those tests are are are, are there, but are really really edge cases at this point and complex ones. Hi, thank you for the presentation. Uh, when you were showing the uh, on Etherscan uh, the contents of the badge. Uh, you showed like that there was like you know uh, decoded like encoded um, uh, set of transactions. Is there any way to decode them uh, to to see what exactly is in the batch? Yeah, it's uh, mainly mainly are the transactions uh, one after the other. Uh, mm, we have some internal tooling just to to take a look on that. Well, actually, they are open source. You can check the repositories. Uh, but uh, we are building it, uh, and in any case, it would not be difficult to uh, um, interpret. At the end, it's just a format with with a array of transactions. I think we have time for one more question. So, if you can lend the microphone to our speaker. Ah, cool. Go ahead. Hey, thank you. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, first of all, congratulations. This is amazing. Um, when you launch, let's suppose it's early next year. Uh, obviously, it's a very complicated system. If you find some bug or something that needs to be addressed, what can you do in that situation? Bootstrapping decentralized systems is not, a, is not an easy topic. Uh, here we have the experience of Hermes 1.0 in our team. And here you do some, I would say, nasty tricks. Uh, here is maybe you do an upgradability, things that you, we can, you can do is an upgrade. So you can upgrade the smart contracts with maybe with a time lock. And uh, you can do, for example, is limit the, 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 withdrawal, the, the, the withdrawal flow that's living in the, the smart contract. So that it's like if you are working with less than a certain uh, amounts, you are freely decentralized. But if you want to run fast and run bigger numbers, then you, you, can, you have the option to go centralized or just or, or white. And you, 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 there are some tricks for bootstrapping, but these are just temporary uh, solutions we, until we feel comfortable. At some point, the roll-up should uh, go along. We are building a decentralized system, and, and it should be safe enough. Here is uh, how we are managing that in the in the in the in the beginning. Okay. 
Thank you so much. Jersey Valina, please give him an applause.